For the third time since he ran for the nation's highest office, President Obama has sat down for an interview with Rolling Stone magazine. Now, these are always long, substantive, totally on-the-record interviews. Without ever saying the name Mitt Romney, President Obama made news by saying this. He said, quote, I don't think that the Republican Party's nominee is going to be able to say, suddenly say, everything I've said for the last six months, I didn't mean. I'm assuming that he meant it. When you're running for president, people are paying attention to what you're saying. See, the etch-a-sketch is implied there. Uh, president Obama skewering Mitt Romney there for what has already started to happen on the Republican side of this general election, which is that Mr. Romney is abandoning a lot of the hard right positions that he took to win the primary, and he is instead adopting a whole new, in some cases, opposite positions that he's going to try to run on in the general election. At the same time that President Obama went after Mr. Romney for shedding his skin and dropping his own positions and picking up new ones because it's convenient, uh, the president also, in this new interview, goes after the Republican Party as a whole for how far and how fast that party has sprinted to the right, even just in the last few years. This is kind of incredible. He says, quote, think about John McCain, who obviously I have profound differences with. Here's a guy who not only believed in climate change, but co-sponsored a cap-and-trade bill that got 43 votes in the Senate just a few years ago. Somebody who thought banning torture was the right thing to do. Somebody who co-sponsored immigration reform with Ted Kennedy. That's the most recent Republican candidate for president. And that gives you some sense of how profoundly that party has shifted. And it's true. I mean, it's not only that Republicans like Richard Nixon or Ronald Reagan from kind of a long time ago would be way too liberal for the Republican Party of today. Even the very last Republican they just nominated for president in the last election is off the charts to the left of where you are allowed to be as a Republican now. Uh, what John McCain sponsored with Ted Kennedy, uh, the president referenced there, was a comprehensive immigration reform bill, a bill to reform the whole immigration system. For people who did not have the stomach to reform the whole system, Republicans cooked up a much, much smaller bill, kind of a niche bill, called the DREAM Act, uh, which just did the, the, the easiest, smallest parts of fixing immigration policy. That was what was on the menu before. Now, this year, not only are they not going to reform the whole system, their guy this year says he would even veto the little niche bill. He would even veto the teeny tiny everybody agrees on it fix that was cooked up specifically for conservatives who were too scared to do any big policy. If I were elected and Congress were to pass the DREAM Act, would I veto it? And the answer is yes. This year, the Republican nominee would veto the conservatives' own immigration bill, the little one. There, if you can do nothing else, at least you can do this bill, he would veto that. And he says the Arizona Papers, Please law, which sicks the police on anybody who looks like they might be an immigrant, he says that law should be a model for the nation. That is the bill that is before the Supreme Court today, the Supreme Court of the United States. Today was the last day for oral arguments for the Supreme Court for this year. One of the liberal-leaning justices, Elena Kagan, is recused from this case, so there are actually only eight justices hearing this instead of the usual nine. Now, Arizona calls the policy that it's pursuing with its papers, please, law, uh, it calls it att uh, attrition through enforcement. The basic idea is that you'd make life miserable for immigrants and hope that that scares them out of the state. They call it attrition through enforcement in the courtroom. On the campaign trail, they call it self-deportation. You say you don't want to go and round up people and deport them, but you also say that they would have to go back to their home countries and then apply for citizenship. So if you don't deport them, how do you send them home? Well, the answer is self-deportation, which is people decide that they can do better by going home. This is one of those things that Mitt Romney is going to try to pretend he never said endorsing the Arizona Papers, Please law as a model for the nation, and specifically endorsing this idea of self-deportation. Uh, yesterday, in a Q&A with reporters, uh, Mitt Romney's now great surrogate and supporter, John McCain, denied that Mitt Romney had ever said self-deportation. A uh, Huffington Post reporter, Jennifer Bendery, caught this exchange on tape. Listen. She also has supported the policy of self-deportation. No, he hasn't. He has said that that's one of the options that needs to be looked at. So don't put words in his mouth. 
don't put words in his mouth. For the record, uh, one more time, here's the words that were, in fact, in Mitt Romney's mouth of their own accord. Well, the answer is self-deportation, which is people decide that they can do better by going home. What was that President Obama said? I don't think their nominee is going to be able to suddenly say, everything I've said for the last six months, I didn't mean. Mitt Romney, you said the answer is self-deportation. So far, John McCain is denying that you said that, saying anybody who quotes you saying that is putting words in your mouth. Mitt Romney's main advisor on immigration issues has been this man, Chris Kobach. Here's the Romney campaign's announcement that Chris Kobach had joined the Romney campaign the first time he ran for president back in 2008. Chris Kobach is one of the authors of the Arizona Papers, Please law. When Mr. Romney proudly announced him as his guy on immigration this year for the 2012 campaign, he said, quote, Chris has been a true leader on securing our borders and stopping the flow of illegal immigration into this country. With Chris on the team, I look forward to working with him to take forceful steps to curtail illegal immigration and to support states like South Carolina and Arizona. Arizona that are stepping forward to address this problem. Uh, Arizona has its papers, please, law before the U.S. Supreme Court today. Uh, South Carolina essentially copied the Arizona law, but South Carolina had theirs blocked by a lawsuit before it could take effect. But Mitt Romney, in choosing Chris Kobach, implicitly and explicitly out loud in print, spelled out when he was announcing Chris Kobach as his immigration advisor, has called the Arizona idea a model for the nation. You've talked, Governor, about self-deportation. If businesses do their job asking for the right documents, the people will leave. But what about arresting? Should there be aggressive, seek them out, find them, and arrest them, as Sheriff Arpaio advocates? You know, I, I think you see a model here in Arizona. Mitt Romney's campaign is also trying to deny that he ever said that. They're trying to deny that he ever said the self-deportation thing. They're trying to deny that he said that Arizona would be a model for the nation. But he did, in fact, say those things. He's really, really, really extreme on immigration. He will try to erase that for the general election. He's already trying to deny that he took those positions. But he took those positions. There is tape. There is a problem here, though, for Mitt Romney, beyond just what President Obama pointed out today about having to try to convince us all that he didn't mean anything that he said for the last few months. There is a problem beyond just blatantly reversing positions and denying that you said stuff that you very plainly said. There was an amazing article in The Washington Post yesterday. It was an, it was an interview, uh, kind of a pseudo-puffy profile, of Chris Kobach, um, Mitt Romney's immigration guy, the SB 1070 guy along with the guy with whom he wrote the Papers, Please law in Arizona. Right? Papers, Please law in Arizona became the Alabama law, became the South Carolina law. All of these draconian, unprecedented in modern times, anti-immigrant laws that have passed in the last couple of years were written by Chris Kobach and a guy named Michael Hefman. Quote, Kobach and Hefman have helped six states and at least seven cities and counties write tough legislation that allows local police or bureaucrats to crack down on illegal immigrants. So why have they been doing this? What is their aim? Remember, Chris Kobach is Mitt Romney's immigration advisor. And this is what Mitt Romney says should be a model for the nation. What is motivating these guys? Why are they writing these laws? What do they think they are doing with these laws that Mitt Romney says should be a model for the nation? Quote, immigration is on track to change the demographic makeup of the entire country. You know, what they call minority majority, says Hethman. How many countries have gone through a transition like that? Peacefully, carefully? It's theoretically possible, but we don't have any examples. Wait, that's why we need anti-immigration bills like the ones you guys wrote in Arizona that Mitt Romney says are a model for the nation? That's why we need them? To make sure that America stays white enough? To keep the number of non-white people in America low? That's why we need immigration reform? That's what's motivating these bills? You know, what they call minority majority. How many countries have gone through a transition like that, peacefully or carefully? It's theoretically possible, but we don't have any examples. If that kind of reasoning, that the country might not be white enough unless we act to keep it that way, if that kind of reasoning sounds a little familiar to you, it's because a group called Public Enemy did a whole record about it in 1990. Where is Public Enemy? What's the deal? What's your latest hit, brother? Fear of a black planet. Do not believe that this is hype. 
the guy who, with Chris Kobach, wrote the Papers, Please law that is before the Supreme Court today, which Mitt Romney says should be a model for the nation, explains that the justification for anti-immigrant laws like the ones he wrote, the justification is maintaining an adequate proportion of white people in this country. And so Mitt Romney is trying to decide where he wants to be seen on this issue. And he's doing it in public, clumsily, after he's already gone on the record in ways he is apparently now regretting. And this issue is only going to get bigger between now and the election. The Supreme Court, having heard arguments on the Papers, Please law today, is going to rule on it before the election. Democrats say if the court lets the law stand, they will bring up a bill in Congress to overturn it legislatively and make Republicans vote on it. Republicans boycotted a Senate subcommittee hearing on the issue yesterday where that announcement was made, leading to awkward pictures like this one, where it's just Republic, excuse me, just Democrat Chuck Schumer and Democrat Dick Durbin and a guy trying to hold up Dick Durbin's visual aid, but that's it because nobody else showed up. During that hearing, Arizona's Republican state Senate president, who got recalled from office and replaced by a more mainstream Republican for having supported this Arizona law, he yelled at Chuck Schumer that, actually, I can just play it. Here's, here he is yelling at Chuck Schumer. We have a national crisis, and yet everybody wants to ignore that, the cost, the damage, the crime. And we can go through this, and if I had the time, Mr. Chairman, we're allowed the time, I could give you a lot more information, too. Again, that's Russell Pierce having been turfed out of office for having made Arizona essentially a national pariah, for having shepherded this legislation through to passage, this Papers, Please law. Russell Pierce speaking there in the Senate, talking about the national crisis that justifies this law. For the record, this national crisis he's talking about, this national crisis we have in illegal immigration, turns out is not so much really a crisis right now. Literally, in terms of the numbers, the Wall Street Journal reporting this week on a new study showing net migration from Mexico to the United States has dropped down to zero. But having taken the position that there is a huge crisis, a crisis so dire that it necessitates radical policies like Arizona's to be a model for the nation, Mitt Romney, as the Republican nominee, now has some problems. Tactically, there's no way he can win the election with numbers among Latino voters that look like this. It is just not possible. He has the awkwardness of very clumsily now trying to drop his super anti-immigrant positions as if he didn't have them. Uh, in, in time for the general election, even though everything he said was on tape. And denying he had those positions that he took on tape, of course, makes him look like a liar. But maybe the biggest problem and the least reported problem in all of this is that in allying himself with the papers please side of the immigration issue and taking Chris Kobach on as his immigration guy, he has hopped in bed with and ad ad advanced the national interests of people who say they're doing what they're doing in order to preserve the white majority in America in order to keep the number of non-white people in our country from getting to be too high. How do you explain that one away? Joining us now is Steve Kornacki, senior political writer for Salon.com and MSNBC contributor. Steve, it's good to have you here. Thank you. Good to be here. Uh, do you think Mitt Romney um, has a bigger problem than flip-flopping in that uh, his original position that he's going to try to flip-flop from is maybe more perilous than has been anticipated uh, in, in the political calculus so far. Yeah, well, I think the issue is this. Romney's sort of flip-flopping tendencies, there's, there's a very specific way that he flip-flops and reason that he flip-flops. It's to bring himself into alignment with whatever the sort of target audience of the moment is for him. So in that sense, the Mitt Romney that we see right now really is, more than any other nominee we've seen from the Republican Party in, in decades, I think, a perfect reflection of where the Republican Party is right now. And, and on this issue of immigration, you see, it, it, it means that basically if Mitt Romney had not even opened his mouth on the subject right now and became the Republican nominee, he'd face a huge issue with Latino voters right now. Because yes, John McCain won the nomination in 2008 and he was sort of a black sheep on the immigration issue. But, you know, since this issue exploded, you know, about, you know, six, seven years ago nationally, the Republicans have sort of gotten in bed with the guys like Russell Pierce. They have defined and driven the Republican Party's message on this. So even a guy like McCain, who basically had a reasonable immigration record, absolutely got his clock clean with Latino voters in 2008. It was, it was a historic, you know, 40, 41 point gap. So that's what Romney's inheriting right now. And that means that if he's going to try to etch a sketch his way away from this in a way that doesn't alienate that base that's already suspicious of him, it's almost an impossible task because when you inherit that much baggage, you need to do something dramatic. And his wiggle room here, I think, is very nuanced. It's very limited. Obviously, the difference of opinion, difference of political opinion on this issue and how much wiggle room politicians have on it, 
um, is determined in part by broad feelings about immigration and what the right thing is to do about them. But I wonder if it if, if this new detail that's emerged in the Washington Post, that the co-author with Chris Kobach of the Arizona law, which is the model for all of these other laws, which is before the Supreme Court day, today, uh, before the Supreme Court today, I wonder if him saying it's explicitly for a racially designed outcome in the United States in order to maximize the white population vis-a-vis -vis the non-white population, if that's potentially a political tipping point, doesn't that kind of sharpen the edges here a little bit? Yeah, but again, you, you wonder how will Mitt Romney handle some aliens? Because we've seen a pattern here where, you know, the people he's aligned himself with, the sort of forces he's aligned himself with to get this nomination, when they have said sort of comparable things. I think of like Rush Limbaugh, when Rush Limbaugh went after Sandra Fluke, you yeah. know, a few months ago. What was Romney's response? It was a very tepid, well, that's not quite how I would have put it. You know, it wasn't a, an explicit condemnation. He is scared of going to war with these guys. And so I, I think the most wiggle room he realistically has on this is, yeah, if, if somebody makes, you know, a sort of blatantly racist statement on this, he can distance himself from the statement. He can make sort of a bland, you know, statement that, hey, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily think that the Arizona law is a national model, but this is quickly going to become a specific policy-oriented discussion at some point. Okay, your president, Congress passes an Arizona law. What do you do? You know, you were president. You know, a state like Arizona passes this. Do you do what the Obama Justice Department did? And do you go after this? Or do you let it stand? There are very specific questions he has to answer here. And when you have to pick a side there, somebody's going to be upset. Yeah, and, and even before he has to pick the policy side of it, he, as of today, should probably be answering whether or not, I mean, What's he going to say? I like this law, even though I don't agree with the guy who wrote it, that the aim of it should be to preserve the white majority in America. <laughs> right. I mean, like, I'd love to hear him parse that. No, there, there are, that. right. There's, there's really no, it's, it's a needle you can't thread. So. Uh, Steve Kornacki, senior political writer for Salon.com, MSNBC contributor. Steve, thanks a lot. I appreciate sure. it.